usable uh, to file with the photo. It does take a little bit of time. Sometimes captions are kind of the forgotten child of uh, all the work we do. Um, one sense it's real simple. You know, we're trying to answer the basic questions, who, what, where, when, how, why. Uh, kind of broke it down here, who, we want full names, last name, first name. Every once in a while you run into some joker who says, well, I only want to give you my first name. If that's the case, unless there's somebody really important or whatever, we're not going to use that photo. We need their full names. We also need their hometowns. It's a way to, it's just a complete way to identify that person. So just get in the habit of always asking, you know, what's your full name? Double check that spelling. What I used to do is I'd write it down and I'd show the person how I wrote it down to double check that spelling. I had Smith spelled with a Y once. And, you know, and, you know, you just never can assume that you know how to spell their name. Always be asking what it is. Um, you know, and our style is that we have the full name and hometown on every person that's identifiable in the photo. Now, if you've got a balloon glow with thousands of people, no, we're not going to do that. But we have done names on 10, 15 people in a, in a large group photo and had all their names and hometowns. And you never know, in 10 years, one of those guys could be getting the Medal of Honor. And we might enjoy having that person's photo when they were in the grade school. There's value. That's what also be thinking about. These captions are not for tomorrow's publication or today's publication. They're for 10 years from now in our archive. They're a valuable resource. There's something that's there for the company and for future usage. That's why we need this good information with the photos. Um, in school situations, if somebody's under age 18, you know, get their age, include that. Or in school situations, if they're in a class, you can say they're fifth grade or so and so. That's okay too. But the ideal thing is an age. Yeah. Um, once upon a time, in one of those generations of those that came out, you were asking for ages of all people, either ages or date of birth, because we needed, you know, this was shot January 13, 2010, or this time. We were asking date of birth on, I know, police mugs and stuff like that. You know, the more the criminal thing. I don't know if I've ever asked for ages on everybody. Maybe it just didn't come up and it was, maybe, and maybe you didn't send it. I, yeah, it would have been from me. There's some other people have thought about doing and ages on everybody. That came out from I lived that once, trying to get ages on everybody as a photographer. You spend more time arguing with women. I'm being blunt. I, I'll spend, I spent ten, 10 minutes arguing with women about giving your age. And there's just other reasons. It just slows it up that... I've never advocated yeah. ages on everybody. We're also putting a lot of information into one sentence, and so you want it to be easy to read. So if you have, like, Liz Martin, 26, date of birth, blah, 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 lives at this address, which has also been advocated for in the past. The, date of, uh, the address has been put in there because of the geotagging and some other things well, we can use and future uses for that. A lot of that, and then like the full date, we also ask, you'll see down here for the full date, December 10th, 2010, that's just good information for the archive. That gets edited out for daily use. Well, when we say the address, we mean like if you're a specific building, we don't mean a person's address of where they live. Good point. Not their home address, but where, they're, where you're at shooting them would be good. It helps, we're hoping to eventually maybe move on to an automatic geotagging or, you know, you can imagine some of the ways that could be used on photographs in the future as the archive becomes more internet intertwined with the database and internet. Um, full titles on or positions when appropriate on people. You know, military, be very careful with that, getting their full rank and how they specify it. Every branch is a little has their own nuances to it. If they're the president of a con company or the CEO or what, you know, or a, they're a nurse practitioner you really got to watch that you get their correct title. Just don't assume nurse. Ask them, what is your correct title? Um, college students, we like to use, you know, they, you know, freshmen, sophomore, seniors, their major just adds a little bit of interest about the person. Their hometown is where they came from to go to school. So not everybody at UI is Iowa City hometown. You know, it's more, now, you'll run into the guy who's a doctor candidate and has been going to UI for 10 years. Well, maybe he is, his hometown is Iowa City. 
just kind of, you know, use, use your practical judgment on that. Uh, be careful of getting, make sure you get the complete names of groups, organizations, you know, it's Boy Scouts of America, not just Scouts, things like that. Be asking the full name of the company that they work at, things like that. Don't assume those things, just ask them the full information. Um, the what? Strive to include information beyond what is obvious. Answer the questions a viewer might have. Unless you know for sure, don't assume what a subject is thinking or feeling. I'll touch upon that for a second. But the first part, you know, the what? Why do we care about this? What are they doing? Just a little nugget of, of that. And then the feelings thing is, you know, be careful about, you know, the dog is happy to see a thing. Well, how do you know the dog's happy? You know, don't in, don't put feelings and, and stuff into animals or buildings or whatever. You know, and, and people too. Make sure that let the person express their feelings in a quote or something of that nature, unless it's really obvious. You know, he just won. He just hit the home run. He's coming across the home plate. He's happy. You know, that, that's the. Yeah, um, we run across this a lot, like especially with sporting events. The win, um, you know, as I mentioned, full date. That's real important. It helps us search for them. It's good for five years from now when we are trying to wonder when was that, when did that happen that year, or you know, or something of that nature. It sounds very clumsy in the caption to say, you know, Wednesday, December 10th, 2010. He did this. I know, but we'll edit that out for just daily use. But it's important for the archive that the full date is there. If you can, you know, say the morning, uh, you know, Wednesday's morning. The fire erupted December 10th. You know, it just helps morning, midday, evening, midnight. For sporting events, if it's a big score or a big play, it's always good to note the quarter, the period, something like that, so we can correlate that with, you know, the text that's coming in about this score, this is clay, you know, so and so scored this touchdown. Hey, do, did we have this photo, this touchdown? It's good to know what quarter, period, time it is at. Uh, to help us out with those. Full address we touched about. The other thing is, is you know, just shooting out the boonies. And, uh, you know, it's always good to say rural Marion or 20 miles southeast of Oxford, something like that. Just geography. Give us a little geography of the where if you're not in an actual town. Rule of thumb is to ask the person, where's your postal address? You know, where is your mailbox? What town are you? Associated with, sometimes that gets a little wonky because not every town has a post office anymore. A lot of people say, "Well, we get Cedar Rapids mail service, but we actually live closer to whatever." Say, well, which do you prefer? Type of The how is only for really unusual things when you want to explain to the reader that this was shot from an airplane, this was shot from a helicopter. Uh, it was shot underwater, or if there was a special technique like a really long uh, time exposure, or there was four photos stitched together. You know, some of these cameras, some of the point shoots even will do a panorama stitching almost automatically for you. You want to make sure that's included in the caption that there's a special technique was used. Then at the end of the caption, our style is to go a parenthesis, your name, slash your association. KCRG, Source Media Group, whatever it is, end parentheses, or if you're dealing with a handout photo, you know, Jones County Sheriff, something of that nature, in the end, in parentheses, so we know the source or the credit. It, think of it both ways. It can also be, this, it might not be true credit who shot the photo, but it's the source of the photo to us. So that's what that last in the parentheses can be. It can be either one. Special instructions, we're using this at the beginning of the caption. Asterisk, asterisk, all caps. If there's something that we, that the editor who's looking at this photo, the person that's considering using the photo, that they better be aware of right on top. And on the second page is a whole section on the special sec 
instructions. I'll touch upon that. Mug shots, this is where, you know, if you've got a handout photo from the sheriffs, it's always good to have the date of birth, you know, if they've, if they've supplied that. Go ahead and include that, the crime that they are alleged of. You know how it is. In a year, we've got somebody with the same name, and we're wondering, is that the same person who did this, for, this crime before? As much identification, date of birth, alleged crime previous, or any, all that helps us make sure we're getting the right person, because we really don't want to get the wrong mug on the wrong story of the wrong person type of thing. So, you know, with those, that's where as much information as possible helps, you know, just to help us make, make sure we got the right person. I'm not going to go through all of this, uh, but I've typed out a couple examples, you know, just you know, cut and paste a couple examples actually from the archive of what a fuller caption would be. We want a caption to be more than one sentence. You know, so if you state the obvious, then try to find something more that this event continues Sunday and Monday from 9 to 3, both days. A little more information that the, uh, that the it's going to help the viewer, the audience, the reader. It gives them a little more information. A quote from the person is always really helpful, but a caption should never be, unless it's a mugshot, one sentence long. You know, there's more you can add to it, you generally. And it just really makes it a better read, gets more people information. A little deeper here, um, our style is to write in the present tense. The remainder of the caption, generally written in past tense. Um, it gets into it about the idea of not writing one sentence long. When multiple photos might be used together, like the chicken guts, you know, try to come up with some unique information for each photo, you know, but the editors have got to be aware that when they look at it, they've got to be looking at all that caption information and maybe they can dice it up and, and spread it across the two or three photos they're using. But you've got to provide enough information so they're not running the same caption with every photo. That gets boring for the reader, the viewer, you know, the person online. So try to have some unique information with each image. Our style is to include the state only for cities that aren't, aren't in Iowa, uh, but also, but do include it for Iowa when it's a city that might be confusing, like Paris, Iowa, or uh, Helena, Iowa, which is, there's also a Helena, Montana, you know, it's the state capital, and Washington, obviously, causes sometimes. So for those cities, it's good to include in Iowa after it, so, we, so everybody's clear that we're talking about the person who lives here in Iowa. But in general, you don't need to put Iowa City, Iowa in your captions. Uh, school stuff, include the school's full name. That's pretty straightforward. If a, children, a child's getting an award, we like to include mom and pa's full name. Just, just kind of a style that's kind of carried over from the years. It's just to recognize the parents, too. Really try to avoid the, the phrases as pictured in or, or in this photograph. You know, we want these captions to read as part of the photo, not to all of a sudden kind of remind you that you're looking at a photo. You know, it just flows better as a package. Um, I don't know, then the file size. Special instructions, there's some examples here. Um, the graphic nudity, dead body. You know, sometimes you might go and shoot something and there is a dead body in it. We might file it to the archive because you never know. Maybe there's a case where we do want to use that shot with the body bag in it. We'll note that in the special instruction at the top of the caption so that everybody's aware of it right off. There's no Mickey Mouse. You know, there's a dead body. There's a body bag. In, no body bag in this photo. Just state it right there so the editor has that information right up front and can make a decision about it. Uh, ex offensive language on t-shirts or on graffiti. There's another one. Um, CQ, you know, odd spellings of stuff. You can note that in the special instructions at the front of the caption. Um, and there's some other ones here. We, we go to some things where kids, you can't show the kids' faces. So maybe note that at the front so the editor doesn't get his photos wondering, why don't we see any of the kids? You know, you, you could note that, that we were prohibited from showing any of the kids. Any questions on captions? All righty.
Thank you. Well, actually, um, one thing, when you're photographing a school, a lot of times those consent forms will say, like a parent will have checked first name only or picture, but no name, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, whenever we're going to show someone's face in the paper in a 